Hello everyone and welcome back to the channel for another war video. For information, this is tier 4. We currently have the unsteady ground tactic. Doom is banned. So I went for some debuff detox attackers in Kitty Pride and Hood as well as Nimrod. We're going to see take some mutants later. And this really ended up being a wonderful Hood showcase. So let's get right into it here. I start off by phasing and throwing a heavy. This is path five, so we have the ebb and flow knockdown. And I decided to throw that heavy and just get the fury, get the protection down right at the start without basically like wasting any bullets. By throwing the heavy without any hexes, uh, it basically meant I didn't waste the bullets. There, I needed to throw the heavy, and we did not get a good amount of damage because the protection was up. But you're going to see throughout this fight that I am prioritizing knocking her down. I am making sure that my phase is up fairly often. Uh, we're just going to keep our bullets topped off. We're going to throw our special two when we can, and we're going to detonate when we can. You don't get any additional bonus for having many, many, many hexes on them. The you know if you have one hex and you detonate it versus if you have eight hexes that one hex will do the same amount of damage so i guess what i'm trying to say is that you know um, detonating your hexes as you go doesn't sacrifice any damage so something interesting that you saw there when her little uh it kind of looks like a thundercat symbol i like to call it when that says 10 it means that the next time she heavy attacks she's going to go untouchable but I was also phased, so we were basically both in our like miss modes and we just totally missed each other and nobody got hurt and that was kind of nice. And basically we're down to the last part of the fight here. I've done it pretty safely. I'm just blocking the specials because I didn't practice how to dex them. If they miss, if I have my phase up, great. Right there we did this the thing again where we were both untouchable, which is pretty hilarious, but totally worked out. And you know, I'm taking four fights with Hood in this war, and I wasn't sure if I needed to take the boss, but I ended up taking the null boss at the end as well. And I think what you're gonna see in this war is that bullet management is a real part of playing Hood. Now we're starting the next time we use Hood with somewhere around like, well, I think it's 24 bullets, which is pretty good considering we went up against Shuri who doesn't have any buffs. It really meant that we were keeping on top of our misses and making sure that we weren't wasting bullets when we, we knew they weren't gonna do a lot of damage. So in this moment, I'm really thinking, you saw it there, I'm like, should I use Hood, should I use Kitty? And I knew that Hood had a lot more work to do, so I decided to go with Kitty Pride. Now she does have the uh, Nimrod synergy, so what you may have seen there is by starting with a parry heavy, which is safe against Mole Man because the first few uh, monster mass that he builds up, you have a longer stun duration. Um, it gives you a guaranteed crit, which basically ramps up your prowess guaranteed. That's what the Nimrod synergy does. So with that and just some kind of lucky crits and stuff, we are all the way up to 20 prowess and we're totally safe. Now this is tier four and sometimes people place with recoil. The thing about the ebb and flow nodes is that they start with the debuff shrug. So, I mean, obviously Mole Man would do that anyway, but we're going to see later. There's, I think, at least one more uh, recoil defender as this special two is just going to take him down. Um, it's an interesting way, if you do have people that will not take it off, that you can place them on path five because ebb and flow will at least get rid of the debuffs. So anyway, the name of the game there was using our phase. We, we even procced an unstoppable at one point and it wasn't that big of a deal um, because we were just gonna miss and take no damage. And when he does miss, he takes more damage. And with 20 prowess, one special two was enough. Now this next fight is one that I wish that I dueled. Um, and now right there, I just missed an input. That was probably on me, uh, but not the way that I wanted to start. Um, the, the reason I picked Kitty Pride here was that if he does get any of his, um, you know, if he does get any of his uh, crazy concussions and thorns damage back, I do have a little bit of a way to deal with it. Um, I'm trying to, to knock him down. And the way to do that, you can't parry him, is to basically bait the heavy and the special one and then punish it. As I found out, the special one spacing wasn't quite what I expected it to be. So I'm going to just stick to punishing the heavy like that for the rest of this fight. And he does have aggression prowess. So this means if like he throws a special two or something and I'm not good on the decks and I block the whole thing, it's going to do a lot of damage. 
Um, and basically we want to try our best to keep his hydration down, um, which is basically don't let him throw a lot of specials. <laughs> um, another way we could have done that is if we threw a special one with the incinerate on. Um, if the incinerate stuck as a passive, I think that would reduce his hydration as well. But Kitty Pride is just quite good. And because I made some mistakes, I am going to have to heal her up. I try my best to not use items because uh, in tier four, the loyalty is better spent on resources. But what can I say? I'm a very competitive person. and <laughs> I like to take a lot of fights. So here we go. This is node uh, 22, Hazard Shift. And I'm just showing off that we are not doing anything fancy. We are, we are just parrying and hitting him during the incinerate mode because we're immune to incinerate. So that entire time, anytime an incinerate proc, we got a little bit of our prowess bonus. On this node, he has power focus two, which really can work in your favor because you don't want to be him, you don't want him to be throwing special ones. Um, and because his increased power rate gets him to the special two faster, and then after that it slows down, you can basically be really aggressive, push him to the special two, and things are just going to kind of work out. When you use a mutant against him, the um, tactical charges are always going to be a little bit of a, a gamble because, um, you know, the, the issue is they don't happen on every hit, so you can't effectively control them but the fact that they don't happen so often really helps you uh, just keep him from going unblockable and things like that he does have unsteady ground so we're getting these glancing um, but i'm doing my best to try to not get shocks on us and we do have debuff detox so that you know in that case we blocked a special one we go debuff immune for a while it means that the shock isn't really going to be a factor anyway and while we're phasing the shock is going to basically be willpower healing us as well so i do think kitty is a really good counter here i know tier one is currently dealing with the planetary endurance tactic so this isn't what they have but i think debuff detox at least in the tier four level uh, for the challenger map is worse um, right there, our stun immunity saved us from getting parried, which is one of the other benefits of phasing. And, you know, because of that, I think a lot of people are still placing the, uh, you know, this one with the glancing because it's, it got pretty annoying. Um, you know, this is taking a while, obviously, and we have class advantage. It's a rank four kitty, but we are just going to use basic hits to kill him. And I've been holding this special three on purpose. The special three is like my emergency exit switch. Like if, if things go wrong, you throw the special three and then you get that really long phase so that like you can tank a special three. Um, when he gets enough tactical charges, if we're phasing, then you know he can hit us and it'll give us the combat power rate from our SIG ability. You've seen a lot of people cheese uh, Nick Fury with her, I'm sure. So we throw this, hope that it kills him. Of course, it doesn't quite kill him. And we're just going to play it safe because this is my final kitty fight, or so I thought. Um, but he's so close to being dead. We just have to bait one more special and just go for it, and he goes down. So yeah, that was sort of a, a very safe-looking fight because we have incinerate immunity. We have debuff detox. So for the most part, the debuffs weren't a problem. The glancing wasn't a problem. We used the class advantage and the phasing to our effect. We held the special three, and he went down slow and steady. Now this was the fight I was most excited for. It's node 23, which has like the bubble shield and the roots. And unfortunately this defender was running recoil tree. So he's just going to be, his Cersei is going to be just like killing herself, unfortunately. Um, there we do proc the glancing. So I have to bait this special too. Um, but yeah, you can see that so much damage is being done from those debuffs and the recoil that this this becomes a pretty negligible fight uh, but i do want to get a fate seal off so that i can get some of my bullets back um, and unfortunately we went all the way to our special uh, two at that point and we're actually because of the glancing our our hexes fell off so in a fight where there are a lot of buffs i was hoping to have a much better time uh, with the bullet management, but there we get some bullets back. We get some good hexes. I'm just going to detonate them now, and I'm going to throw this. It's a little risky, but did you see all those nice power steals? That's one of the reasons his SIG is so good, um, was we threw that special two, and because we were invisible, 
um, almost every hit power stealed, which is pretty lucky, I gotta say, but it, it prevented her from getting too much power. And, you know, that wasn't as smooth as it could have gone. Um, in a way, if recoil wasn't there, it could have lasted a little bit longer, and maybe I could have gotten some of my bullets back. But regardless, very safe fight. Definitely would have felt safe if they didn't have recoil on. And uh, we're gonna go from there. So next up, I've talked about this fight a lot because I've taken it with Omega Sentinel and two other war videos. And I would still say that she is the better counter here uh, because she is nullify immune. But the way I'm playing this with Nimrod is we're, we're not going for like the maximum amount of armors possible. In fact, we're going into the, oh man, what is it called? Blitz protocol. Uh, it's whatever the orange one is. We're going into that so that each one of our hits is gonna remove the prowess and then we're going to be able to throw a uh, special two with plenty of damage. Like one is still going to kill her. And mind you, that's a rank three Nimrod. I think he's Sig 180, but that's not even a rank four. Um, and it just absolutely obliterated her with those shocks. So we didn't have to do anything fancy because of power snack. I just wasn't interested in those armors as much um, and we still did plenty of damage on that special two and we kept it safe removing those prowess so yeah i've often said nimrod is like using a rocket launcher and omega sentinel is like using a rifle and you know in ground ops there there are times for both <laughs> but that time the rocket launcher worked so uh good job nimrod so here we have a fight that i've taken a million times with dr doom it's just it like i could do this fight in my sleep i've been taking it for probably 10 to 15 seasons because I end up on path five a lot. But we're using Hood, who I'm not as familiar with. And right there, we had a very, very smart AI do a beautiful sidestep and clock us. So I'm thinking in my head, that's the only mistake I'm gonna allow myself to make here. Um, we're throwing special two, we're using our bullets, we're gonna detonate a big hex. And this is another fight that I'm gonna lose a lot of bullets on. Uh, just because the end cascaded so quickly and he wasn't creating enough buffs that I couldn't get them back But obviously with mystic dispersion, it's just such a joke of a, of a fight there We were invisible. We were throwing special twos. We were detonating hexes. We were getting back to the special twos um, But in my head, I'm thinking, you know, maybe I'm done with hood. Maybe someone else will take the boss um, but either way, I have to keep in the back of my mind that I only have seven bullets left going into whatever Hood has to do for the rest of the time. Now here is the reason I didn't bring Omega Sentinel. Basically, Omega Sentinel with Mighty Charge uh, scared me a little bit here with the healing. Um, but Nimrod does not scare me. Now we take a hit there, but he's so tanky and he's bleed immune that it really doesn't do much of anything. And at this point, when we're in the Blitz Protocol again, we're removing all these regens, we're ramping from the regens, and once again, all it takes is one special two. That was an unboosted rank three Nimrod. I'm not sure what the rank of the uh, Weapon X was, but either way, you know, it's an, it's sort of analogous to tier one in that I, the fact that I'm not boosting for most of these fights you know, the health and the, the attack sort of even out to what it would be at tier one. And that's just how good Nimrod is. So this is the next morning and I, I had kind of a busy night, so I wasn't really able to do any additional mini bosses. A uh, huge shout out. You may have seen the Arcus on the map on node, I think, um, what is it? 39 with the mighty charge there. Mobius, my buddy Mobius took that with Wiccan, which is a much better counter than my hood. I was thinking about using hood, but the armor break immunity of Wiccan just makes that fight a joke as well as the neutralize. So super big props. Mobius also had a really big war taking mini bosses left and right. But here I was looking at the map and there was an Ebony Maw on the other side. And I'm like, yeah, we'll just let uh, somebody with a science champ take that one. But I saw this Killmonger. This is the stunning reflection and polka dot power. And the reason I took so long to get in the fight is I was calculating if I wanted to use an advanced power boost. And I decided not to because what that would do is it would allow me to throw a special one and put an incinerate on him. But I don't think the incinerate would have lasted long enough to give me another bar of power because if it re-triggers as a passive, then that won't feed polka dot power. So I decided it would be better to just play this fight with no power 
Um, again, because we don't plan, you know, there's there's way better counters to Killmonger here than Kitty Pride. But because I was looking at our map and we didn't have a lot of mutants, and I knew that she could, you know, she could be good at like if reverb is up and I'm phasing, I'm going to be taking less damage and things like that. I figured that I could just kind of whittle him down and just sort of win the HP battle and end with more health than him when the fight was over. So the things I need to worry about obviously are accidentally parrying. I need to be a little mindful of the reverb damage. Um, particularly knowing something I could have done better is knowing when I'm activating reverb like right there was a good version basically you want to activate it when he has low power because that is how much damage back he will do for the entire reverb cycle if you activate reverb when he's got two bars of power it's going to be hitting like you know a max sig korg but if you do it when he's under a bar of power it's not that bad um, and I'm not negating all of that damage. In fact, I have a lot less health than he does. Um, the other thing you have to worry about is, you know, running into the unstoppables. But if I'm phasing, that's completely safe. You saw me do that against Mole Man earlier as well. You basically just phase into the unstoppable and he misses and takes a little bit of damage. And then, of course, the biggest thing I have to worry about is... Uh, basically like taking a special two. Sometimes he throws that special two in a way that just surprises you or gets you clipped or things like that. So we activate reverb very high in his power, but that combo does get him down and everything works out. So yeah, definitely uh, kind of YOLO'd that fight a little bit. Uh, but we were getting to that time where I had a lunch break and we were saying who should take this null. And I decided, well, actually, Kat was like, I was like, should we do Wiccan or Hood? And she's like, well, Hood has debuff detox, so I think that's better. So this this is Null. Um, he's not that difficult on this node when he doesn't go unblockable. He's pretty difficult with the glancing. But if we are good enough with our debuff detox, like better than I'm doing now, then we are going to be able to go debuff immune. In order to do that, we have to take some blocked hits. We have to do some dexes. Right now, I just I don't want to get cornered. He throws a special one. That's kind of not what I wanted him to do because now I may have to worry about a corruption. So at this point, my game plan has changed and it's just deal with the encroaching corruption. So special ones, I normally don't throw with Hood, but in that case, it was worth it. Now keep an eye on the bullets, right? We started with seven. We haven't been throwing that many and we're at nine. It's because I'm actively phasing, we're actively getting these bullets back. And also I'm able to occasionally stagger and fate seal some of these physical and energy resist buffs that come off of the node. Like right there, we got a really nice fate seal. Like before, I'm a big fan of just detonating when you can because it does the same amount of damage. So now it looks like things are under control. I've healed back to full, which you can do off of the debuffs and off of the abilities that he has. But something's about to happen here. Uh, I totally got clipped. I totally got clipped. And I think it was because I hit his block and then I dashed back too early. And then he got me on that very long <laughs> necro sword that he has. So I'm toast, right? But somehow I don't die from it. And then even though corruption is on he didn't go unblockable unstoppable and he didn't go into reverse controls mode and i think the reason for that is because i had my fate seal up which reduces ability accuracy i think it's like a 65 percent chance or so and that absolutely saved me because if he was unblockable unstoppable and i had reverse controls i would need to be like msd for the rest of this fight in order to get through that but instead, I just survived the special three, and it was just like the fight kept going. Um, and I threw one more special two and one more heavy, and he went down. So that was um, more surprising than I thought <laughs> right there. I was, uh, I was in my car like on a lunch break. I wasn't really expecting to solo it, especially after taking that special three. Um, but yeah, that, that's one of the reasons I enjoy war... Uh, when it's a little bit more casual because like you don't really know what you're going to get yourself into when you play 
and some really funny things happen. I try to record, I don't always remember to record, but this one kind of lined up to be a fun war. Got to see Hood used in some unusual scenarios. We saw Shuri and Atuma on the map, not bad. Uh, a really fun Nick Fury fight, and then the boss solo at the end. So it went pretty smoothly. Big shout out to my teammates as we did end up winning this war. Again, Mobius was an absolute MVP. Uh, in our battle group, as well as Rivalry, he took a bunch of the um, the minis as well. Uh, but yeah, it's been going well. We're having a good season. We're mostly winning. I'm taking a bunch of fights, and it's been a good time. So thanks for watching my video. Hopefully you learned something today, or you enjoyed the gameplay, or at least you enjoyed the thumbnail, the thumbnail of me getting wrecked by Null. Normally, Null's on the left side of the screen with my rank 5 Null, but in this time, he was on the right side, absolutely wrecking me in his special 3 animation, but we survived it. Thanks for checking it out, and I'll catch you in the next one.